Right. Hey, what everybody, what's up? This is the third part of the video, getting to know me and Alex over here. Uh, just like I said in the previous video, just doing a deep dive into, you know, our background and how we got here. You know, we don't want people to follow us blindly, just thinking, oh, these some guys on the internet, just because we're on the internet, we know what the hell we're talking about. So we want to just give you background on us. And again, look at the other two videos that we uh, produced this week on this. Um, and just to give you an understanding of who we are, what we know. So, you know, what we're saying is based off of this information, not just, you know, some random person that's just spewing off a lot of stuff on the Internet. You know, more than more than likely, they don't know what the hell they're talking about or they never lived a life or know where you come from. So hopefully these stories are helping you relate to us. And so we can get a better understanding, a better, you know, better flow information between us. So you you know that we're talking from a place of knowledge and not just, the, you know, just spewing stuff off at the mouth. With all that being said, so Alex, um, when you, so you had your aha moment, you seen, uh, you know, a way you started saving, you started saving, you saw that, you know, you didn't technically need college to, uh, make more money than the teachers that he was actually going to school for, you know? So after that, what was like your next step to be like, okay, let me put this plan in place and start doing this. So not really what what you said to yourself but really what did you do once you once you put the plan in place just give us a step by step and then let's take it up to you know really really to, to today not today but when you got started and you start putting your plan together let's let's take it to there so like i was saying in the previous video um by the point where i started hearing about tim sykes i um i was working um aside from just selling antiques so at that point is when I kind of just had like the interest of um, of actually investing because, you know, I realized selling antiques would only get me so far because to actually scale it, you would have to have an entire employee force and all that. And it's very unheard of. There's there's guys that sell antiques and stuff where it's like a family business you know maybe their daughter does the cash register and stuff but it's like you don't really see these businesses scale to making tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars a month and so right. the idea that i could maybe learn stocks intrigued me because the potential of actually making that money was there without having to go the college route and so that's when I started to like just look up a little like I started to like research the bit I could and I started like investing in like acorns or like Robin Hood and stuff like that and I didn't really know what it was like I remember in 2018 um do you remember like at the beginning of the year when the market was coming down and I was like and I had that mentality like oh I'm losing money <laughs> like like I didn't understand like you know you just the shares are just depreciating and so I didn't even you know I didn't understand I'm like actually buying shares I thought I was just like investing into like a savings and it was supposed to depreciate so I was like I don't know what the heck I'm doing and then but I can so I like I stopped doing that and I was like I just need to learn more and then that's when uh we I think we've talked about Chris from work and he was like, Yeah, my boy Kirby so you know, he trades stocks. <laughs> so I was like <laughs> So I was like, yo, I want to talk to him. And then that was like the first time like he like FaceTimed you or something, and you had talked about options. Right. I had never I was like, I don't know what options are. And uh then I kind of like looked up options and I didn't understand it like what the heck and then there was a time where it was like a couple months later um he he invited me to his brother's house to uh i forgot what it was what was going on that day but he was like kirby's gonna be there i was like can i go like uh, and so that's when i came along and then it was through meeting to so everyone watching it was actually through meeting kirby when i started like actually get like i remember telling you it was like a blueprint on like how to actually do everything and then from there, it was just like, it was just plugging away. Like, I started on Robinhood, uh, actually buying individual stocks. Um, and you had given me some tips on, like, some good stocks to buy. And I had gone ahead and bought those stocks. But 
I wasn't putting a lot of money into it. I think before the account, I think before COVID, I had about sixteen hundred dollars invested, and you were like, you gave me a tip, like, oh, I, it looks like the market's about to come down. You, you, and I think you were like, if I were you, I would sell now or something like that. And I was like, this guy knows more than me. I'm just gonna sell. And then I sold, and the market just tanked. And I was like, good guy. I was like, so, <laughs> I was like, well, I mean, sixteen hundred dollars. You know, it wouldn't have been a tremendous loss, but like, it would have. Yeah, right. It would have been scary, I guess, for me as a new investor or whatever. So selling it, I think I had like 26% profit on it. It was kind of cool to see like, oh, I can make 26% on what I put in. So then I started just running numbers on that. Like, what if I had 10 grand and that would have been $2,600 and so forth. So right. from there, then during COVID is when I started to really like, that's when, you know, we were or I was really learning piggybacking off of you. Kirby was calling me at three, four AM from the stock strategies through me. <laughs> and so, you know, that that's when I would say I started a I still do sell antiques and stuff, but I started to like branch off knowing what will actually pay more in the end and started focusing on stocks and then, you know, then it led to real estate. Yeah, and and for everybody, um I still do it. Actually, last night, uh, I was sending Alex text at like four o'clock this morning. <laughs> so, I mean, that don't stop me. It's it's a never ending process. Um, after my aha moment, you know, like I said, I, you know, deep dive in the stocks and, you know, you heard of Tim Sykes. I never knew who Tim Sykes was, but, you know, all the word on base was, oh, man, you should invest in penny stocks. And then it met that mantra of what I was trying to do, get a lot of shares in one company. And, you know, we talked about on a short uh, sponge tech, I'll never forget that stock a day of my life. And I put every dollar penny that we had in our household on that stock. And I lost roughly about 50% in like a day, but it was a penny stock. I mean, it was a pity, epitome of a penny stock. And, um, you know, greed was a factor because, I mean, it, it went up, you know, a couple a couple pennies and I could have sold. But I'm thinking, oh, I'm about to, I'm going to warm up with this thing and hold it forever. And and hindsight's 2020 20 now. You don't know what you don't know when you first start now. And that's why it's always good to, you know, talk to people that that's in the know. I didn't, uh, Alex, I didn't have nobody to talk to to tell me. What the hell are you doing? Get the hell out of that stock. You know, I no, I didn't have that person. So me, all my bumps and bruises came along, you know. And then so after that debacle, you know, most people would just quit. You know, I put my life savings in a, in a penny stock and I lost 50% of the money in a matter of, you know, days, hours. I'm saying it went down that fast, but I was in the stock for maybe about a month. And then it just was sitting there at the same price and it just dropped. And then so... Most people after that, they they would have swore off of it. They was they would they'd be like, "Oh no, I ain't doing this ever again." And I mean, you hear many horror stories of people you talk to, like, "Oh yeah, man, I invested in penny stocks. That stuff didn't work or whatever." But for me, I truly one hundred percent believe in there's in life. There's wins and lessons. So when I when I took the money out and I was down fifty percent, I didn't say I'm gonna quit. I looked and said, what the hell did I do wrong? And I went back to studying and studying and studying and studying. And um, I remember a chaplain, a chaplain in the army. Uh, I was I was about to go on a mission. And then the chaplain, he always came around before every mission, you know, say a prayer, you know, talk to the soldiers or whatever before they went out on a mission. And then the conversation of stocks came up and... Uh, and then he was just talking about, you know, Bank of America's, you know, big name companies and stuff like that. And then I'm thinking like, oh, well, yeah, it's easy for you, you know, to retaliate everybody else. Oh, it's easy for you to invest in something like that. You're a captain in the military. You make a lot of money. It's not about he had enough money to invest in it. It was he put his money in quality companies that he knew. And the reason why he's, you know, of course, he's way older than me then. The reason why he was able to put that capital to work was because he's been putting his money in cap in quality companies for a while. You know, everybody wants to start out and be on the same level of somebody who has the knowledge instead of going through the process. 
And so I knew the mindset and thinking behind it because that's the same way I thought when the chaplain said that. But, you know, first, when he first said it, you know, I thought the thing that I was just telling you about, like, well, yeah, of course you can afford it. But then I realized that, hey, you got to start somewhere. And then if you start somewhere, then you will make it grow over time. So I kept immersing myself in that. And then I bought more quality companies, companies that I knew. Um, you know, I still remember like the first the first couple stocks that I bought, MGM, um, Altria, that's still one of my favorite stocks of all time. Uh, Altria, because it's shareholder friendly. Um, there was a couple more out there. I'm not going to deep dive into that. But those were the ones that I held for a long time. And I just was like, okay, I'm going to get quality names. But then I just immersed myself, immersed myself, immersed myself into personal finance. I want to know everything. Like when I'm texting you, like you said, I text you at two or three in the morning. It's because I'm not sleeping. I'm not sleeping because I'm looking for the next advantage, next advantage. And then so my from that point on, my only call to life was, yeah, I'm still in the military. Yeah, I can shoot. I can communicate. I can move. I can do all that stuff. Uh, but every time I wasn't on a mission or doing something military wise, I was studying personal finance. I was studying how how to build wealth, how to get rich. And th that's what I did for the next Hell, that was 2000, 2008, 2009, every day since then. That's what I do every day is just jump into that. And then it's funny. Uh, so people, you know, people care about degrees. So just for, you know, Alex, he's right. A degree, you don't need a degree to make money. Do I have a degree? Yes, I have a degree in finance. Um, but the reason why I have a degree in finance is not for the reasons people think. It's not. Oh, I said I'm gonna give you degree in finance so I can make more money. That's not why I got the degree. The reason why I got the degree is because I taught myself so much in finance, and then I wanted to share with the world. But the only question everybody asks is, "Well, what degree you have?" And I was like, "I don't have a degree, but a degree wouldn't change my mindset on personal finance and how to go about it." And it's so I saw once I said I didn't have a degree, people was very dismissive of it. And then so I told myself, I said, all right, I'm going to I'm gonna get a degree just so these people listen. Now, hindsight 2020 again, I don't give a damn if I got a degree because I don't care if they listen because with the degree or not the degree, 99% of people ain't going to listen anyway, you know, but I took that challenge upon myself. And then so I've learned so much about finance from that time. So fast forward to 2000 and I want to say 2013. 2014, actually 2014, the day my son was born, I said, I mean, literally two days before he was born, I signed up for school. And the first day of school was actually the day my son was born. So I'm in. So while my wife's going through labor, I'm in there on the computer on my first day of school. That's exactly how it was. And I'm and I told myself, I said, I'm too old to be sitting here for four years doing school. So just like everything else that I do, I just immerse myself into it. Uh, and then so the four year degree, the four year degree that I went for, I completed in 18 months because I took double the workload all the way through and just got it done. But that's just was my next step from there of how it came about and why finance was my path and why I have the degree. Uh, but in the end, the degree didn't teach me nothing that I didn't already know. It may gave me some terms or stuff like that, or gave me some formulas that I probably didn't, you know, wouldn't think about. But the formula that they gave me that was new, it wasn't nothing that, you know, was like, oh, wow, I needed to know that. So, but, you know, a lot of, a little bit of uh, international accounting and stuff like that. That stuff good if you, you know, you plan on working in corporate America, but that's not, that wasn't my plan to use a degree to get into corporate America. I'll just use a degree to quote unquote, have a status behind my name and say, oh, I really do know what I'm talking about. But in the end, nobody don't really care. What, I mean, it's, it's you're going to do it or not. You have the information or you don't. So I put, I put everybody else's fears on me and I went and got the degree. And that's how, that's how I really, uh, you know, segued and moved about. And then so for the viewers, the viewers is watching, that's, you know, just a roundup of where we come from, what we do um, and how we get it done. And like I said, we want to give you an insight on on us to know that this information is coming from 
people that started with nothing. I mean, you know, the rap lyric is started from the bottom, now we're here. No, it's just, we started from nothing. We just average, everyday, ordinary people. Alex is not some uh, silver spoon white kid that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, mom gave him everything. Like he said, he went to, he went to private school, but the only reason why he went to private school was because his mom wanted him to do something better, and she made all the sacrifices in the world to make that happen so he can get there. It wasn't, you know, he didn't have a trust fund, and you know, he was, you know, had a security guard and walking with his preppy book bag and stuff like that. You know, he lived in Clermel, you know, the hood. Right. So it's not it wasn't it's not a, you know, just a, you know, guys just sitting here running their mouth. And we came from the same places that most of you came from. So understand no matter who you listen to on social media, you do, but understand their background, understand how they got there. If, you know, it's easy, it's easy to talk about, oh, this is all you need to do uh, to get wealthy. If you started on third base using a baseball analogy, if you started on third base and then you, a single will get you home. So if you already started, you know, on a pile of money and then now you're running your mouth talking about how you know how everybody else should do it. You don't understand the grind to, of what people have to go through to get there. And we just want to share with you guys that we understand how having nothing start with nothing and the process that it took to get to something. You know, we you know, Alex. Alex, he was, I wasn't even in, I wasn't even in the batter's box, you know, Alex, he, he was neither, but of course, everybody had their ideas and things like that, but I wasn't even in the stadium, I had to get in the stadium to get on the team, to get in the batter's box, to even try to hit a home run, so, but it's a grind to get there, and, and we people that, under, that understand the grind and know what it takes to get there, and just, again, we want to give you insight on who we are. And with all that we said, we'll continue this on a part four, stay tuned like and subscribe and share these videos.